Hi guys, welcome back. It is, I guess, part three then of the S200 stock repair and modification build. Today, I'm going to show you how to fit a nice beefy cheek riser kit, so a comb riser kit, into the rear end of the stock here. When I cut this out, I'm going to do two cuts. I'm actually going to cut off the cheek piece first, following the, roughly the top edge of this tape on here. Then I'm going to do a second cut along this lower tape edge here to remove a little bit more of the excess wood out the back. And what that will also do is expose the cheek hardware slightly and it should make it look a little bit more aggressive. There's numerous ways in which you can do this. The way that we're going to do it today, I'll do it with the most basic of tooling that I can come up with. Hopefully it will be nice and easy to follow. Let me just bring over some of the jigs that I've got here and I'll show you a nice easy way of truing this up and jigging it up so we can run it through the bandsaw safely and securely. Okay, so I've got here, this is a small scrap of coated MDF. This was, um, I'm not sure, I fished it out of a skip. I think it was an old set of drawers or something like that. For a baseboard, generally you're better off to use man-made boards as opposed to plywood. So if you can get your hands on some MDF or chipboard, this sort of thing, the kitchen units, this is generally a bit flatter and that will go through the bandsaw. That bit cleaner, there's less chance of it wobbling and rocking on the bandsaw table. If you haven't seen the last video I did where I put the accessory railing up the front, you really ought to watch that. I'll put a link up at the top for it now. But what we've got here from the last video, these are some scraps of chipboard that I've cut up into slithers. Now the width of these is just a millimeter wider than the widest point of this stock, which is in the middle here. If I remember rightly, the stock is 51 millimeters wide and we cut these at 52 millimeters wide. I've got a few of these different bits of board left over from that project. However, that is just simply a piece of chopped up chip board. It's got flat sides and I've marked the center lines on them. One of those I've screwed on now to this flat board and I've just removed a section here. So what we can do, I can screw that on there like that. We can pick a spot underneath of the butt pad out of the way so it can't be seen. Right, so that's now securely fixed to the base board. This can now be ran through the bandsaw. I've left this edge on here. What I'm going to do is actually run this alongside the guide fence of the bandsaw. So it's going to go through the bandsaw this way and the blade's going to follow out here. And when we get to the edge here, when we want to start bringing this cut out, we'll stop the saw carefully, we'll hold on to the guide board, we'll slide the fence out the way and then we'll carry on our cuts. And by doing it this way, this is now parallel with the bore, it's parallel with the air cylinder, and it also gives us a flat reference edge to keep this line as true as possible. The cheek piece looks fairly flat, but it has got a very gentle taper downwards to it. So I'll get this set up in the bandsaw now. And as soon as it's in the saw, you'll suddenly see what I mean. But so the guide board is now running along the bandsaw fence. As that cut progresses through, once I get to about here, I'm going to stop the saw and then I'm going to freehand this last piece of the cut. Now I'll do the outside of the cuts first. So the cheek piece drops away and then I'll come back and I'll do the inside cut here. Now, if you've got some screws in the backing piece here, you need to be very mindful of where them screws might go because the last thing you want to do is come around this edge here and if you've got a long screw, for instance, you definitely don't want to be clipping the screw. In a lot of instances, I wouldn't necessarily remove any additional wood, but by doing it this way, it will expose that cheek hardware. It will make the rear end look a little bit more balanced because it's quite bulky here and it should just make it look a bit more aggressive. So that's what we'll do with this one. Right, so I've got a lovely clean cut on there. That won't require an awful lot of sanding at all. Right, we'll get stuck in and we'll do the second cut of the two and I'll set the saw back up again for that second cut. You want to need a ski? Okay, so the cheek's now cut off. That was easy enough. The blade I've got in here, and this is one of my favorite blades for all round sort of workshop stock building use, is a quarter inch wide blade and it's a six teeth per inch Axminster ground tooth blade. Now it gives a nice fine cut. The actual tear out on the cuts is also very minimal. That will sand off with probably a couple of strokes of 180 grit. Do 
just like that. So I'm eyeballing where I want the cheek hardware to go. I'm working out roughly where it's going to sit so that the cheek hardware and the fixing screw here, or the fixing bolt should I say, is fairly well centered on the cheek piece in its elevated position. As I've mentioned in all the other videos, it's probably a wise idea to have taped this up with masking tape before you start cutting, but I'll do it like this so you can see it a little bit better. So I've got a couple of marks here which I'm now going to transfer around over to the top edge and that will give me the stop and start points of the channel that I'm going to drop in for the clamping section. Okay, so I've just got a start and a stop point of the flutes that I'm going to put in there. Now what I'll do is I'll measure from side to side along this reference line and then I'll split the difference to give me a centre line. So I've got some guide boards screwed back on, so the same as I did in the last video. It's simply screwed through where the barrel band goes and this one's down through the stock bolt hole. So nice long screw, it's sticking out the bottom but makes no real difference for this. And on the butt end I've screwed on another one of the guide boards. So these are screwed along the centre line of the stock. This now means that we can pop this in between some guide boards to keep it fairly well centred. And then we can cut this with the router. So I'm going to get this in between the guide board set up and then we'll prepare the router and we'll start making some passes. I'm only going to cut this in sort of half the depth of the clamp section so you can see it a little bit. But of course, if you wanted to fully enclose it, then you'd want to go just a touch over depth to recess that fully into the stock. But I want this to be sitting slightly proud of this stock so we can see it. Right, so the guide boards are back out again. These are just a couple of scraps of pine. These are a couple of old shelves. Now I've just prepared these so the top and the bottom edges are parallel with each other and they're both the same height. If you make your own guide boards, all you need to do is clamp the two together, drill clean through both boards, and I've got some M6 studding here with some wing nuts and washers on both ends. So this will give us some reference faces and effectively work as sort of a router ski setup. I have another one of the little scraps, which is the same width as the ones that are fixed to the stock currently. I'm going to drop that in down onto the bench. Where this is dropped in the bottom here, this will keep this side the same width and will stop the boards from closing up at an angle so it'll help to keep the guides parallel. So I've just dropped that into the guide board setup. I've put a little bit of tension on each of the bolts at either end of this so I can manipulate this carefully. What I need to do next is this flat edge here, so this is the parallel line with your bore and your air cylinder. This is going to come up slightly. We'll use a flat edge to reference them together so that we know that they're flat and parallel with each other. And then I'm going to measure down from this top edge here to make sure that the back edge is also then parallel with these guides. Okay, so the guide boards are now in the vise. I've spent a little bit of time making sure that this flat surface is parallel with these guide rails. It's worth taking that little bit of extra time and double checking just to make sure. What we'll do now is get the router set up and I'll put some stop blocks on so that we can only travel as far as we need to back and forth along this little flute that we're putting in. Okay, so I've got it set up now with the little router. I can just creep down to the depth that I need. I've put a couple of clamps on to limit the travel back and forth, so the stop and start point of the cuts. With these clamps in these positions at the moment, I'm a little bit shy of the finished length that I need, what I'll do is then creep up onto the finished length of that slot as we go. So I'll work my way down. It's only going to be four and a half mil deep, this cut that's going in, so I can do that probably in two or three passes. I'm just putting a little mark on my guide board here so I can shuffle my clamp along just three quarters of a mil. I don't want that to be a super tight fit in there. I want it to be just a relatively loose fit, in fact, actually, because if the stock expands and contracts and the likes, I want this to be able to move relatively freely. I don't want the stock to contract around this and potentially split it. So a looser fit is actually better. There we go. That's perfect, so this is 18 mil wide. We've cut the slot at 19 and we've got half a mil of back and forth adjustment in there as well, just a little bit of wiggle room. So that's absolutely perfect. And that's it and slightly proud of that top edge, how I wanted it. Right, that's gone in there lovely. It's a nice loose fit in there. We've got sort of half a millimeter all the way around. 
I'm going to leave it in the guide boards for the moment. If you've got enough space in your workshop, you can actually leave this in here, mark up the hole positions, and then you can also use this then as your guides for drilling it. It'll keep the stock upright, but I can't quite fit this in the little shed here. Can in the other workshop, but what I'll do, I'm going to mark the fixings for the screw holes first, and I'll just drill them by hand and fix the bracket into the position that it is now. Then what I'm going to do, the posts on this are 10 millimeters in diameter, so I'm going to drop a 10 mil drill bit down in the post holes once the bracket's fixed in to mark up and give me the centers of the holes, and I'll drill those by hand, oversized, probably with a 13 mil, maybe a 14 mil drill bit. Right, my favorite screws to actually put these in is good quality plasterboard screws. They've got a really coarse single turn thread and they'll take a lovely bite into that. And they're black as well. So I'll find a couple of those and screw that in. Of course be sure to make sure that you don't bust straight out the bottom of your stock if it means putting a depth stop on or something like that if you can't accurately judge it put a bit of tape around here something like that just so you can't go too wayward and skew out the bottom right that's giving me a good start that's beautifully crisp and clean in there having decent sharp drill bits this works absolutely beautifully this beach quite like the smell of it as well when i'm working it which is nice Right, that can go back in for the moment. In fact, we're pretty much done with the stock body for the moment. Next thing to do is to jig up the cheek piece. And what I'll do is take out a slightly wider channel out of this. The top plate of the cheek piece riser is the same width as the base at 18 mil. But what I'm gonna do is take out a channel probably 25 mil wide. So then we've got the option to misalign it slightly if we need to make any offset adjustments before we finally screw it into its final position. Right, so I've got my little mini guide board set up that you've seen before, so much the same as the big one, just miniaturized. There's a slight taper from back to front on the cheek piece. It's actually a millimeter and a half, just shy of two millimeters narrower at the front edge than it is at the back edge. So you can see I've clamped it in, gently pinched up the rear of the fixings on here. And again, I've got some tiny little tapers cut from plywood that I can use to center that up. Okay, so that's about as near as parallel we're gonna get the cheek piece to the guide boards. Okay, so I've offset the router now. I'm gonna do a couple of passes coming in from the rear. I'm not gonna plunge it like I did with the clamp section. I'm actually gonna open it up all the way in the back. So a couple of passes up to my mark, down to depth. So the depth of the cutter is the same as the thickness of that top plate. Okay, so we've got a nice wide slot there now. So when we come to put this all together for a final fit, we can put a small piece of double-sided tape between the cheek piece and the cheek riser, and we can sight it just in the offset if we need to, to get a really consistent sight line before we then finally mark it up and screw it. So looking good so far. Just lightly assembled that. I've just popped a small piece of double-sided tape on top of the cheek riser. I knocked out this little groove here just with the Dremel. I need to come back to that. When I do a final sand, I've still got quite a lot of sort of dings and bashes and stuff to touch up, so I'll do that then. I need to get this out. It's just about to start raining, so I can't go out and quickly shoot it now, but I will screw that cheek piece on once I've finally established it's offset position like i say because we've got that wider slot now in the cheek it allows us a little bit of misalignment to get a really decent sight line so i reckon we're all but done i'll get some nice photos of it and put it up but if you've done a decent job of it you won't need any shims or anything like that to true it all up but it's quite straightforward granted this is one of the easier stocks to do it's relatively flat it's certainly not too problematic. Down the line, I'll show you how to cut a nice swoopy cheek and make up some elaborate jigs to hold your cheek piece once it's cut off. That's certainly starting to get a lot more involved, but once I'm a bit more proficient with the filming and things, we'll go with that. So I'll tell you what, guys, I think for this one, we're done. I'll catch you in the next one.